Jamal Adams signed his deal today. I think everybody, at least in the NFL world, is excited about this. Four years, $72 million, $38 million guaranteed, $20 million signing bonus. And I am always going to be a fan of the guys that put themselves out there, right? That bet on themselves. I think this is a good thing for those kinds of people. And and he is one of them. He got to Seattle last year as part of a trade, and everybody thought it was just kind of a done deal that they would they would knock out this contract. It'd be no problem. And he said, whoa, y'all aren't offering what I feel like I'm worth. I'm going to just go out and play for a season. We'll figure yeah. it out on the back end. And show enough. Show enough. He got the deal done. I love it. Players Union's got to be happy. Oh, yeah. Because he, he, the guy that, that got himself... You know, you know, paid really well, raised the bar, highest paid safety in the game. So that should set a new mark for the rest of the safeties coming up behind him that are going to be at the top of the end of the level. Uh, I think this is a big deal. I think he's a really good safety. I hate when people don't know how to watch football. Like, I'm not an expert at all of watching a football, okay? I don't know every breakdown of every position, but I understand I grew up playing defense and I understand defense more than anything else. I, I understand there are two different types of safeties, okay? And when they they want to compare interception numbers, and they want to say, oh, he's you know he's not even this, he doesn't do that, okay? Take those guys' interception numbers that you're looking at and look at their sack totals, all right? And look at their tackles for behind the line of scrimmage, okay? They're goose egg because they don't do what he does. He rushes the quarterback. He blitzes the hole. He stop. He's a run stuffing quarterback sacking type of safety. This is how he plays, and that's the role he plays. Yeah, he right? fills in the gap. He does all kind of stuff. Like, he's this is, this he's all that, over the but, yard. But people only know how to look at defensive secondary guys, DB guys, and say interception or nothing. That's it. And, and they don't understand he's just a different kind of linebacker, all right? And, and he has unbelievable amounts of value to a football team. He's really good. I'm glad he got paid. Uh, I do think this makes Seattle's defense just that much more stable. They're gonna need to step it up from last year. That defense was not great last year. No, but it, it was not his fault. Oh, no, it wasn't his fault. No, yeah. they're bad. They're bad on a lot of places of the defense. They got to yeah. get better. Uh, Jamal Adams is is one of those guys. You know how they talk about positionless football. Yeah, it, it's it's a hybrid kind of thing where he could play linebacker. He could he could rush from the edge. He can play in the secondary. Like he is versatile. He can play anywhere. That's and. Right. And this shows like there is a spot for guys like that. He's I mean, very this, similar to the Honey Badger. Yes, I mean, it's just it's what they do. Honey Badger covers way more than he does now. Oh yeah, today he didn't he didn't used to, but he covers. I guess he's always kind of done both. Jamal Adams doesn't cover nearly as much as Honey Badger does, but but Honey Badger does not stop the run as much as Jamal Adams I does. I don't know. He can. He, he can, can do that, too, yeah. He can get that hole, and he definitely can get some sacks. So. Yeah, no, he, he can certainly do it, but I, you know. Maybe not today. Maybe not today. He's pretty long in the tooth for an NFL safety career. No, you're you're right about that. You were right about that. So, good for Jamal Adams. We are I, excited to see it. I like guys, you, you yeah. said you like guys that bet on themselves and, and hit. Yeah, when he got traded, the I mean, I think the contract offers last year was almost half of this money-wise. Yes. I mean, I think they were in the you know thirty million dollar range total. I don't know how many years, but like that's what they were talking. I mean, he he got that doubled. That's so. I I will say this. I did say last year we we talked about the Dak Prescott stuff, and I I was of the opinion, yo, I probably would have signed that thirty five million dollar a year thing because what if you go out and get injured? What if so forth? And he got injured, and he still got a contract that was one hundred and sixty something million dollars. Because quarterback, I guess, is just different. It's, but, well, it's just, yeah. So, here's the difference. Dak was, that that bet was far more risky because Jamal was a first-round pick. Jamal Jamal's rookie contract, hell of a lot bigger than Dak's rookie contract. Not even yes. close. Not even apples to apples. You could live the rest of your life as long as you're not living like a prize fighter off of Jamal's rookie contract and be okay. Yeah. Right? You could not live the rest of your life off of Dak's rookie contract. Hey, maybe off the endorsements. No, but that's not his contract. <laughs> but that's he not his NFL endorsements contract. Into, yeah. into effect. That's not his contract. So that, that we're having a different situation 
if somebody's offering you a lot of money and you haven't made a lot of money at that point in time, it's a lot different than a guy who's already made a lot of money saying, no, I'm worth more. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.